Mother Stone House and um, one of my childhood memories was my mother making chili sauce every year and uh, she used to grow the tomatoes in her garden and um, I've never tried making it but this year my first time I'm going to make her chili sauce. My name is Farishta Hashimi and my story is I always wanted to learn how to can things and I was always scared of it. So I took a canning class which was great but the thing I loved the most that we canned were the peaches. So then I went on and it's been two years in a row now I've been canning peaches and they are the best thing in the world. My nephew loves them so much he gets them as birthday gifts. That's all he wants, canned peaches. So that's my story. <laughs> My name is Maria Nunes. I live in Parkdale and I've been gardening since I was about 18 on my own. My parents always had a garden and one of my first memories about garden tomatoes was my mother teaching me how to make a lovely fresh green bean and tomato and onion saute. And that's a flavor that has always stayed with me. Every time I make this, it brings back memories of where we lived and would go out and pick the green tomatoes, and, uh, the green beans and the, and the tomatoes and make this lovely little really fresh dish. So when I first moved out to Parkdale actually, I asked my landlord if she would let me grow tomatoes and that was my first bona fide garden. I had cherry tomatoes everywhere. It was just one big huge pile. And ever since then, I've just, I can't even eat a store-bought tomato fresh. I will cook it, but I rarely eat a fresh tomato from a supermarket or even a green grocer. Even if it's from Ontario, okay, maybe sometimes, but there's nothing to me like the taste of a fresh, sun-ripened tomato. And I've tried to grow them ever since. Hello, my name is Elen Paulin Murray, and I'm going to recount an early memory of a food that was very near and dear to us as children growing up in a, a home where there wasn't a lot, and desserts were certainly not very common or popular, and my mother was not a baker. However, my mother had quite a dramatic flair, and um, once in a while she'd create this dessert dessert called Gogel Mogel and we didn't know what the heck that meant and uh, of course as she started breaking egg whites into a bowl and stirring them all up and the egg whites became frothier and frothier and we were as children wondering what is this and then of course she'd add a little sugar and she'd add a little cocoa and before we knew it we had this like chocolate mousse for a dessert that was absolutely heavenly and to die for but it had this weird name Gogel Mogel and we never figured that one out but we remembered it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah my name is Rima McLeod and I grew up in in St. Thomas Jamaica. The fresh beef and uh, that was boiled with pumpkin and the, the chocho which is a type of Jamaican vegetable as well and then there were little dumplings in there as well and the uh, it was really tasty and nice, and uh, I, I've cooked it here too. My grand, that's my grandson's favorite as well. He he's my favorite boy as well. Um, the only male in the family, so I probably favored him a little bit. <laughs> you know, we're in love with each other. Say you're preparing a dish and you need the flavor of the hot pepper. About three to five minutes before it's finished. That's when you wash your pepper and you put it on, on top and make sure you don't do any heavy stirring and cover it and then the, the flavor will transfer to your dish without the heat. If that pepper bursts open, it's over. Like <laughs> So that's the key to, 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 to cooking with the hot pepper and get the flavor from the hot pepper. Yes, I learned that from my mother in Jamaica. <laughs> my name is Imelda Chapman. I grew up in the Caribbean in a small island called St. Kitts. And there we had many natural vegetables and fruits growing. What is now known as a organic here is what we know as natural growth of food. So um, whatever is 
obtained from the garden is what we make. We, everything is homegrown and home cooked. So um, my, I might add also that my dad was a fisherman. So we, whatever we had was always combined with fish. We do a lot of peas and rice that um, could either be done as two peas separate from the rice or in a combined dish. And sometimes you put um, certain meats inside that dish. And with chicken, especially, it's called pilau. Hi, Hi my name is Jim Hughes. And I grew up outside of uh, Sheffield, Ontario, on a little farm. My mother was a superb cook. And I mean superb. Roast beef with Yorkshire pudding gravy. My mother's famous mashed potatoes, uh, chunks of carrots, and lots of gravy at the end of the meal because my mother expected her plates to be clean. So anyhow, you took a piece of bread, buttered it, scooped up all the gravy. That was the best part of the meal. To say that my name is Arthur Fraser. I live at 20 West Lodge. Um, I, I grew up in the north end of Peterborough. My mother used to make spaghetti and meatballs. And me and my sisters used to raise this spaghetti pot on the stove uh, and eat all the meatballs out of it. <laughs> Before suffering, we ended up having like two meatballs left. <laughs> uh, but yeah, spaghetti would be the, the thing that I remember most. Hi, my name is Pat Bremner and I have an old family recipe that is near and dear to my heart. My parents used to make it and they got the original recipe from Jesse Reed's. Uh, it's a Toronto cookbook in, um, and there's that. And it was called Mrs. P's Mustard Chow Chow. And it is on page 385, Mrs. P's Mustard Chow Chow. Also, there is the pickle uh, company in Toronto that supplied the actual uh, vinegars. And the mustard pickle was made according to the whims of my parents. Sometimes it was close to the recipe, sometimes it was different. And it would end up on their basement shelf like that. I do have one of my old jars that my father's has his handwriting on. I keep it in my kitchen high in the shelf as a memory. So the other thing is that if my mother liked you, you got a big jar of mustard pickle. If she didn't, you got the little jar. Yes. So my name's Mark Campbell. I've been living in this neighborhood for a long time. My dad is a doctor and um, occasionally, I think it was Fridays, he'd give my mother a break and he'd say, why don't we go to the hospital for dinner? And I recall having lobster thermidor at the hospital cafeteria for dinner. I kind of don't think that they do that anymore. Uh, my name is Hope Humphrey and I'm a community member. I've uh, lived in the area for 30 years. All my relatives are from the junction from the 1800s. The treat for me was uh, every weekend on Sunday evenings, the responsibilities for the meal planning went to my father. So my father could only cook one thing and that was pancakes and so we ended up eating a lot of pancakes luckily with maple syrup one of the best treats was the uh, days that he decided to make buckwheat pancakes so those were my treats uh, and that's my food story okay my name is Frances Edmonds uh, I live around the corner uh, and I'm an immigrant from the UK. Uh, so growing up in England, one of my favorite things about my food story was my grandfather kept bees. And I used to love uh, eating the honey. Uh, I would eat it by the spoonful. Because <laughs> it, uh, it would crystallize, so it would not be the runny honey, it would be... Uh, but I remember the jars always stored in my grandmother's pantry. And uh, whenever you went to visit, you would always get a jar of honey to come home with. So it's a pretty cool story. My name is Helen Chidoba. I've been in this area since the 50s. I'm part of the old Polish generations that were born here. When I think of tomatoes of the past, we had tomato salads, and they would be sliced tomatoes with onions and oil 
lemon vinegar, vinaigrette salad, and um, the tomatoes were usually used in a, a cabbage roll. I hear of a new way of making them. There's a Newfoundland style of cabbage rolls these days, and you would put it loose. You would cut up your cabbage and your rice and your meats if you use meats. I find that I also like to mix it with a little bit of buckwheat, and you would bake it. And um, it's a lovely meal in itself, and you can mix it with other foods as well. So Hi, my name is Luann, and I'm here participating in this great uh, plant story. So my recollection, I guess, and I guess fondest memory is my mom growing plants. Um, I'm from Alberta originally, and we had this massive garden, which my mom worked on um, after work, Saturday, Sunday, like constantly, and she grew the best tomatoes. My mom, we had like tons of tomatoes, which lasted the whole entire year until the following year, but she prepared them in so many different ways, um, potato salad, potatoes, so I think and to this day it's one of my favorites, plus tomatoes, and tomatoes can go on anything, so. My name is Ariadna Okramovic, and I am um, of Ukrainian background, and I guess as a child I ate a lot of Ukrainian food, so my favorite maybe could be cabbage rolls. and. Um, my mother, I think, was a really great cook, and um, so cabbage rolls can be made in many different ways, and um, so I like the recipe with rice and uh, ground meat and mushrooms, and um, they're very complicated to make, uh, but it's one thing that I learned to make, uh, and it's served with sour cream which I loved uh, with anything in Ukrainian food. You can put sour cream with pierogies or borscht or so you can have cabbage rolls with sour cream or mushroom sauce or tomato sauce. So there's all kinds of variety so you never get tired of cabbage rolls. Hi, my name is Jerzy Batowski and uh, my favorite comfort food from uh, my youth uh, it was steak tartare. Uh, it was something that I always look forward to. Haven't had it in a long time, but that is uh, my uh, happy place. Well, steak tartare uh, starts off with uh, uh, something like a, a beef a sirloin tip. Uh, it is minced um, uh, at home, of course, and then uh, some uh, chopped onion would be added to that. Uh, usually some uh, paprika. Uh, some people put uh, salt and pepper. Uh, I don't do salt and pepper. Uh, but that, uh, oh, and egg yolk. Of course, everything is raw.